which will in turn lead to a reduction in energy costs and environmental degradation. Performing an energy audit is important because on this case, the mining sector uses a lot of energy alone, but with some energy management opportunities. And a lot of money is used for buying electricity, which renders high operation, operating co costs. An energy audit helps in reducing environmental degradation as it ultimately helps in reducing emissions. And the problem statement is that at the mine, at the mine at the mine, not all the energy that is purchased for the operations of the mine is not final, or all of it is not finally useful. There are many avoidable energy losses in the mining sector which can be avoided by applying energy management strategies. And the objective is to propose energy management opportunities after the after is to propose energy management interventions after opportunities, opportunities have been found. So um, this is the methodology. So in conducting the research, I visited the mine and I met with the relevant authorities, the energy manager, and then we conducted some interviews about energy consumption. And there was access to some preliminary data and some uh, an energy a walkthrough audit was was made a brief audit. So after that, detailed data collection was was made, and energy management opportunities were identified. We and the analysis was made depending on the environmental impact of of the interventions and the economic viability. And after all that, the energy audit report was ready. So the limitations of this study is that metering is only undertaken centrally for large areas of consumption, but not locally for a single energy use process. So from the preliminary data, we could see that the mine load profile for 2019, there are their daily operations, their load is above, normally above eight megawatts, and sometimes it goes about close to two, to 12 kVA. So, and because billing, industrial billing comprises of the peak demand, monthly peak demand in kVA and energy in, megawatt, in kilowatt hours, this is how the monthly, the monthly components of the bill look like. And for identif identification of opportunities, uh, on this slide we can see the final energy uses at the mine. And 70% of, of the mine electrical consumption went to oil extraction, mineral processing, and workshops. And the problem here is that the power factor is low. And then secondly, lighting, which takes only 5% energy, electrical energy. So there were some opportunities here, which include the daylight, the daytime lighting, space heating. Also there are opportunities, which the next slide shall. And then there is water heating, the water that is used, used for bathing. So, here for office and domestic uses, the, we, I didn't, uh, we did not deal with this one because uh, the idling consumption of such machinery is negligent and normally domestic machines and office machines are changed within a short time, maybe two years, so it means their efficiency improves as such. So, this is how the opportunities were dealt with. So we can see uh, there are opportunities from power factor, the plants, the power factor is low, lighting, redundant lighting, daylighting, so in, 
heating, low efficiency heaters, water heating, electricity is due. So the interventions were for power factor, you install capacitors and aerial speed drives, machines, lighting, so the lamp and necessary lights and for heating, introduce more than efficient heaters and confirm heating hours to occupancy hours. And for water heating, we shall integrate solar heating. Then comes the associated savings from the interventions after modeling. Uh, and then peak shaving, how each inter intervention from each energy process was able to shave peak demand. So those savings, energy savings in kilowatt hours and savings from KVA were translated to monetary savings in dollars here. So moving to the next slide. Uh, the interventions were tested economically and this graph shows because we, we had to look for the cost of, of all the components involved in, in, in retrofitting of, of the new proposals. So the price against the cost, the maintenance cost and whatever the cost we were dealt with. So we can see that the net present value of all the proposed inter investments are positive. And so the, uh, it means that the proposed mechanisms investments are, are viable, therefore they can be implemented. So despite the money, uh, there is analysis that environmental analysis. So we are able to avert some tons of emissions because of the savings of power, of energy, electrical energy from the plants. And so the value of this study now is that is profitability. So through optimization of energy expenditure, productivity through optimization of equipment and processes, protection of, sec of security of energy, of energy supply, reduction of environmental damage, and so the how the value of this study to policies that it sets achievable efficiency, efficiency standards in industries and facilities for policy formulations formulation and, and determines distinguished emissions limits by facility type and size. Frameworks such as the time of use tariffs are informed by the audit. As the regulator is able to know how how the major, major energy users use energy from time to time. So the stakeholders that, will be, that are involved or that <clears throat> um, may be interested in this study, so or which we may, may use it in jointly uh, DOEs, any consumers, and LEC, and I think maybe others. So the conclusion is that uh, the identified energy management opportunities are all viable and we dealt with simple and both simple and technical interventions they were, they were, they were implement they were they were visited so these interventions can be implemented because they are viable and finally they reduce environmental environmental damage Okay, thank you. Alewa, um, so you only have us for the whole study. Anyway, so questions, nobody has written questions. I guess we are still traumatized by what happened earlier. 
So for people who have just joined us, um, questions are to be written in the chat so that we, we move faster. But since nobody wrote a question, we can allow one, one verbal question if there's anybody with a verbal question. All right, please un unshare and let the next speaker tell you. The fella is he in here? He's not. I didn't pull off. Oh, he is. Oh, he's joining ah. somebody else. <laughs> oh. Start, please. Okay. Uh, and my name is Lore Kulifel. My supervisor was Professor uh, Zach Kamai. I'm going to present formulating short term electricity demand forecasting uh, for the SOTO. Uh, this is the presentation structure. I will start with the introduction. Then your mic, your mic is a little funny. I don't know why. Or is it only me? Oh, is it clear now? Uh, it's clear. Okay. Um, I will start with the introduction, then methodology, the results obtained, then the conclusions and recommendation. Okay, introduction. The objective of the, the study was to produce accurate short term demand forecasting using the Nostradamus software. And the short term forecasting comprises the hour ahead, the week, a day ahead, and week ahead uh, forecasting, respectively. Now, to use the results uh, produced by Nostradamus to illustrate that LEC can engage in trading activity in the stock market and to perform a comparative analysis of the sub-competitive market and the bilateral agreements. Now, the methodology adopted is as shown uh, in the screen. So in the study, uh, one year data from this, uh, the utility, which is the Soto Electricity Company was used, which uh, was spanning from March 2017 to March 2018. Moreover, um, the day of the week, which is from Monday to Sunday, and the time of the year, which is from January to December, as well as the Lesotho public holidays were used as the input parameters into the Nostradamus model. Now, for, for the training, um, in the study, the data set was uh, divided into the training set and the verification set. And of course, uh, in the error analysis, that's where uh, the determination of how accurate the model was to predict the results was used. And in this study, um, uh, mean average uh, percentage error, which is maybe in short, was uh, utilized. Now, coming to the results, uh, Nostradamus was able to predict the short-term demand forecasting for the hour ahead, week ahead, and uh, day ahead with 3%, uh, 4%, uh, and 5% accuracy, uh, respectively. And this may be uh, are all within the 5% accuracy limit, as uh, shown in the study of Indira in 2014 and Patel in 2015. And in actual fact, this, uh, accuracy actually increases the confidence level in the utility in actually relying on the results of Nostradamus to engage in the trading activity. So what can be said uh, referring to this is that uh, LEC can rely on the Nostradamus results to engage in trading in the sub-market. Now, coming to the analysis of the demand forecast, which is for the hour ahead. The aim was to show how, how well the model was able to track the actual demand uh, 
when it predicts. So as it, as it can be seen in the, in the uh, picture, uh, the Nostradamus was able to drag the actual demand quite well since the gap between the actual forecast, the, the forecasted demand and the actual demand, demand is relatively very small. Moreover, it was able to predict the, the morning and the uh, evening peak quite well. And I should point out that it is very important to be able to predict the peak demand accurately so that the generators or the dispatchers can be able to uh, set uh, to precise, uh, precisely so that they can meet the peak demand. And if the peak demand is not predicted well, it may lead to either load shedding uh, resulting from the, the generation that is not able to meet the demand or it can result in producing more electricity than it is actually needed. So coming to the comparison, comparative analysis of bilateral agreements with uh, the SAP, it can be realized here that during the high demand season, which is from June to August, uh, LEC is actually incurring uh, the most cost. And this cost is actually approaching around 50, 50 million maloot. Mm. But however, during the low demand season, we can see that it, uh, the, the bulk purchases are sitting at around all, uh, half of the cost in care during the high demand season. And now the next slide is what, what is actually contributing to the, the high cost during the high demand season. It is actually the peak prices uh, from ESCOM. As you can see, there's a high spike of the cost during the high demand season with, with averaging around 20 US cents per kilowatt hour. Now, this um, table shows the, the, peak, uh, the peak standard and off-peak prices from both the bilateral agreements as well as the sub-market. And what can be noticed here is that uh, you can realize the ESCOM prices are actually way higher than the sub uh, day ahead market, intraday market, and flexible uh, forward physical market uh, weekly. So, but you can realize that during the low demand season, the ESCOM price is actually going lower than the, the sub uh, market prices. Now, considering the load uh, duration curves, which shows how often the, uh, the demand is attained, you can, it can be realized that 50% uh, of the time, LEC load is sitting at around uh, 103 megawatts. The last uh, peak, uh, which occurs uh, around once, uh, uh, peak of 173. And uh, the base load, it's, uh, which occurs at 100% of the time, is uh, sitting at around 34 megawatts. So what does this actually uh, tell us? Uh, it means in order to reduce the bulk purchases that were seen to be high during the high demand season, uh, the utility can utilize the bilateral agreements to be able to meet 50% of uh, the load, just only the load duration curve. Uh, given the fact that uh, the bilateral agreements, they offer uh, security of supply and long-term uh, electricity supply. And anything above, any load above the base, uh, the intermediate load, then the utility can utilize the sub-market given the fact that the Nostradamus software was able to predict uh, the, the demand with a uh, high accuracy. And also given the fact that it was realized that during the high demand season, the peak charge from, for bilateral agreements was almost twice the same as the market. So in, in conclusion, uh, Nostradamus uh, produced the short-term forecasting results which are close or within the 5% acceptable accuracy. Now, uh, to improve the accuracy further, the inclusion of weather data such as the temperature and, and humidity can be included in further studies as well as the short-term price forecasting. Since both the short-term demand and price forecasting play a key role in trading in the sub-market. And also to, re to reduce the, the bulk purchases, the, the utility can utilize the bilateral agreements to, be, to meet the intermediate load and utilize the sub-market for the load above the intermediate load. Moreover, 
the country can invest in pump storage generation system and purchase and get uh, cheaper electricity from the sub market that is used to pump the water into the 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 storage during the low the off peak so that during the peak the water can be discharged accordingly to meet the demand thank you very much for listening for finishing almost on time um one question for you you mentioned that the map is around five percent and said that the model is five percent accurate in my view, I think it means that the level of error is 5% and the model is 95% accurate. This is also shown by the graph showing predicted versus actual values, which shows it's near perfect fit. Otherwise, why would you use a model with 5% accuracy? Okay, what, 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 what has been realized is that for the short, for the short term, uh, 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 demand forecasting for the hour ahead, the error is sitting around three percent, whereas for the day ahead, it's around four percent, and for the week ahead, around five percent. So that's the it's error. Not that's not the accuracy. I think that's yeah. what, what the question is. is that's, that's, yeah. Maybe you can repeat the question so that I can answer it. No, no, no. I think I think I think it's the way that you put it. The five percent is the error. It's not the accuracy of the model. So it's the other way around. No, it's the other way around. It's actually oh. the, yes, it's actually the Next question is why didn't you include the weather data to improve the forecasts? I think the, with the weather data regarding the, I think time the, did, did not allow. I actually wanted to include the, the weather data into, into the, the model actually, so that I can be able to compare before uh, the weather uh, parameters are incorporated into the model and after, so that I can see how the influence of the weather parameters on the accuracy of the model. Which data did you use for the prediction? Did you use historical data? Yes, the, I used the historical data from the LEC SCADA system, and also I used the day, day of the week, time of the year, as well as the Lesotho Public Holidays. Okay, uh, please, please unshare and let the next speaker share the screen. Your next question is, what effect does holidays, weekends affect the results? The telephone. That, that, that what, what is the effect of holidays and weekends on your results? Okay, uh, you, you you would find that uh, during the holiday, the the load the load curve is uh, is actually different than during during the the week, uh, because people are at home. They are, but during the week, people are at work, so it means the demand during the day is uh, a little bit uh, lower when they are in the office than the. Uh, at home in the weekend. Uh, Simply answered the the load profile for the for the, the the week during the week and the demand are and weekends are a little bit different. There are a couple of comments and other questions in the in the in the chat. Please please address them. But Tema Tala, please start. Uh, thank you, Dad. I am Matsuma Tala, and I was supervised by Dr. Mukulu and Mr. Siddhu Setamai. And my thesis was on determinants of choice of household energy fueling in the Soto. So, uh, so this is the presentation outline. So it will cover the introduction, methodology, results, and the summary. So what are the determinants of choice of energy fuel? So these are factors that influence a household to use a certain type of energy fuel for a certain use within a household. So this may be endogenous, such as age, gender, and income. And also they may be exogenous, such as access to market or policies. <clears throat> so why are they important to study? Uh, we have Agenda 2030, which uh, envisions to uh, have everyone with access to energy affordable 
and reliable energy by 2030. So of particular importance is the, the sustainable energy, the sustainable development goal number seven. Also, uh, the electricity company has been experiencing a decline in average energy household consumption uh, with over 60% of the decline. And also, uh, it has been recorded that the household sector produces uh, the majority of the emissions in the country. So the objective of the research is to assess the determinants of choice of energy fuel for cooking, water heating, and lighting for households in Lesotho. This aggregating the country into different settlement types, that is the rural, the peri-urban, and the urban. So the data used in this study was collected by the Bureau of Statistics through an through a household energy consumption survey, which was carried out in 27. So they used uh, the simply methods that were used for the 2016 census. So the sample size was around 2,885 with a good response rate of about 93%. <clears throat> so in order to determine this, uh, determinants of uh, household energy choice, uh, we want to uh, assess a qualitative variable in nature, which is the choice. So the response can best be estimated using probability astronomy equation one. So where beta zero up to beta i are coefficients of the model and xi are the independent variables. So that is they are the determinants or the factors that influence the choice. So uh, to ensure that the probability stays between zero and one, we have to employ an activation function as shown in equation two, but to preserve linearity as it was in equation one, we have to apply the natural log on both sides so that we get equation three. So this equation three is now known as a logistic regression. But since uh, we are going to compare uh, multiple fuels, so that is uh, the fuel choice uh, is a categorical variable, that means uh, you can use either electricity, traditional fuels, LPG, or paraffin. So we have to employ a multi-logistic regression. So equation four is the model that has to be uh, estimated. So the results, uh, we see that on the, the first column shows uh, our independent variables, that is the factors that influence the energy choice, and the top row shows uh, the energy fuels that are available within a household. So this uh, for this model are compared against traditional fuels. So for example, we can see that uh, age, so this stars here, uh, there's a legend here explaining what each star means. So we can see that age uh, is statistically significant across uh, these fuel types uh, in comparison to, to traditional fuels. And uh, we can also see that, uh, for example, income class, uh, which is the middle income class, it's statistically significant uh, as compared to those in the lower income class uh, for the choice of electricity over traditional fuels and LPG and paraffin also. But uh, I would like to draw your attention to the highlighted cells. So this is saying, although we see that uh, for this column where the model was estimated for the whole country, we see that age is negative and statistically significant. And it's also uh, statistically significant for the peri urban and the urban. But for rural, it is not significant. So it is very important to disaggregate the model into different settlement types because uh, the factors uh, do not have the same effect on the choice uh, across all settlement types. So this is shown uh, by these cells also. So we can see that uh, even though uh, education matters uh, for the choice of electricity over traditional fuels, but we see that in the rural areas and in the peri-urban peri peri areas, uh, education is really doesn't make much of a difference in terms of choosing between electricity to traditional fuels. So uh, this is the regression uh, results for water heating. So similarly to cooking, uh, we also see that, uh, for example, here, age is also negative and uh, statistically significant for the whole model, for the peri-urban and for the urban, but in the rural, so it is not significant. So uh, it really means that uh, when designing policies, you cannot assume that uh, a certain factor that influences energy choice uh, is uniform across all settlement types. So that means uh, you have to take each settlement type on its own. Uh, we can even see over here for education. This time we see that education is significant in the rural areas, but it is not significant in the peri-urban areas. So the peri-urban areas, the rural and the urban areas, they differ. So the last uh, table shows uh, the regression uh, results for lighting. So similarly uh, to the previous 
uh, slides, uh, they show pretty much the same thing. Uh, so I could take, uh, for example, uh, household size. So we see that for this one, it says uh, household size is really insignificant for the choice of energy fuel for the whole country, for the rural or the peri-urban. But if you disaggregate this, then household becomes important in the choice of the light and fuel used in the, in the urban areas. So the summary of the results, we saw that gender of household head is generally not statistically significant for the choice of fuel in the households. Age, income, education, electricity availability, household size and settlement type are generally statistically significant for the choice of uh, clean energy fuels. They are generally statistic, statistically significant. Uh, electricity availability is statistically significant for the choice of LPG over traditional fuels. This is very important. Electricity availability is important for the choice of LPG for cooking, not for, for using electricity for cooking. But uh, we have seen that, however, uh, age, education of, age and education of household heat are statistically insignificant for the choice of electricity and paraffin over traditional fuels in rural settlements. Electricity availability is statistically insignificant for the choice of electricity in rural households. So we also saw that the increase in income is statistically insignificant for one to choose LPG over traditional fuels in peri urban areas. So lighting, uh, the increase in income doesn't really have much effect on the choice of the energy fuel that is used in the rural, urban, in the rural areas. So education doesn't have any influence for the choice of electricity over paraffin in the rural and peri urban settlements. So in conclusion, we are saying, Although there exist gendered roles within a household, this study suggests that gender of household head is not significant for choosing an energy fuel in the household. Hence, clean energy policies should target both men and women equally. Policies should be tailor-made uh, according to settlement type, as we saw that factors that may be significant in one settlement type are not significant in another. And we are also saying the rural settlements can best be served using mini grids as electricity is hardly used for cooking or water heating but instead it's used only for lighting. So as uh, areas of further research, the data used in this study was collected in 27, as stated earlier. And uh, in 2019, we had the introduction of the electricity lifeline tariff. Uh, this was uh, implemented to address uh, the challenge I highlighted earlier of uh, declining average household consumption. So it would be interesting to assess the determinants of energy fuel choice under this pro poor energy policy and compare compare the results of those uh, of that study with uh, those of this study to see if there has been any effect on the use of electricity. Uh, with that, uh, I thank you. Right on time. The first question, if the environment or society change gradually or suddenly, Validity of predictive models may decrease? If? If environment or society change gradually or suddenly, would the validity of the predictive models uh, decrease? Uh, would it increase or decrease? It, yeah, de it, it depends on, well, I think, I think it depends on how it changes. If, for example, the environment changes, uh, uh, let me say we impose uh, a policy that says, okay, so we ban the use of fuel stream to protect the environment. So that means obviously people are not going to choose traditional fuels because of the imposed, uh, the imposed policy. So saying it will improve or, or it will, yes, it will improve or, uh, I'm not sure of the other word, but it's, it's it's hard to say because I, it depends on how, how it will be changing, whether it will be, change, it will be changing for the good of the environment or for the worse of the environment. So it's, um, okay. it cannot give a straight answer to that, yes. Next question, was the data weighted with sample size? The data? Was it weighted with the sample size? I am not sure I understand what that means. Taretavan, you want to explain your question? Uh, th th thank you, Dad. No, uh, I think that before 
regressions are run on 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 uh, cross-sectional data. You have to weight it such that uh, suppose you have a, a, a variable like gender, which is male and female, and if the sample has more males than females, it is possible that uh, the results will see will be significant for males. Yet it is not really that uh, the outcome variable is affected by males. It's just that in the sample there are more males than females. So this is the way the data has to be weighted such that you can cater for that. Thank you. So okay, it? yes, uh, yes, yes, it was weighted. So which factors have you found may be mainly responsible for the reduction in electricity usage that you're observing? Uh, this have been gender and uh, settlement type mainly and education uh, and education also uh, i think this slide here uh, so we are saying age and education are not statistically significant for the case of uh, electricity uh, this is for cooking so we are saying that age affects the the, the older one cooks, the less likely they are to choose electricity and we are saying those who are without any form of education uh, have been we are saying this, I mean, the, what was the question again? Sorry, 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 I got confused. Which factors have you found uh, may be mainly responsible for the reduction in electricity usage? Oh, okay. So I think uh, factors that are significant, such as uh, income and household heat, not, not household, household size, yes. So if you have, if you have a, a high number of members in the household, they are less likely to use electricity as compared to those who are fewer. And those in higher income in, income classes have been uh, have been seen to to be more likely to choose uh, clean energy fuels for cooking. So okay. yes, I think the the, the the main driver is yes. Okay. Thank you. Please unshare. Maruti, please share your screen. Are you in here? Okay. And unmute yourself. Narembol. Hello. Yes, please start. Hello. Yes. Okay, afternoon, everybody. I am Kao Mohuti. I will be presenting to you my research work entitled Optimization of the Choice of Solar Mini Grid Architecture and Management in Lesotho. I was supervised by engineer Tawanda Wove. As outlined here is the presentation outline, which will cover the introduction and background methodology results, conclusions and recommendations, as well as some area for further research. The mini grids are systems that entail small scale electricity generation of up to 10 megawatts, saving a limited number of consumers. And also to lack of uh, energy access is associated with lack of financing, as well as electrification programs, which rely primarily on national grid extension. So this slows the, pro the progress in ensuring that the universal electrification target of 2030 uh, is met. The possible and most practical solution to that for substituting the expensive grid extension will be development of mini grids as well as off-grid systems. 
The problem encountered with mini grid development is that the traditional approach used for sizing those mini grids uh, is to not accurately analyze the performance of the mini grid energy system. And also, there is a little, uh, relatively little work on the process and mechanism that facilitate more sustained mini grid operation. And a need has been identified for an appropriate method which can optimally size the standalone system. The objective function, of the object, study objectives of this uh, study was to develop an approach for, to model hourly load profile in the absence of historical consumption data, since the target was to develop the mini grids in, in the rural areas where there is no electricity connection at all, and also to determine the best mini grid system architectural combination which should be used in Lesotho by developing a computer-based program that can be used for performance prediction, economic analysis, and therefore optimal sizing of the mini-grid system. Develop, development of that uh, computer-based uh, uh, model requires uh, a number of different models to be used. And for treatment of solar radiation data, HDR, HDKR model was used for the following reasons. It's easier to use, it combines all terms of diffuse radiation and also produces results uh, closer to the measured uh, values. For total power output from the PV, Hobe 2000, sorry for the speed, that is Hobe 2000, was used primarily because it requires computation at nominal operating cell temperature conditions, which are provided by the, the PV manufacturers. For the load demand analysis, the demand metrics have been used to model the hourly load provided. For the system sizing as well as optimization, the time step approach method was used for, for sizing. And the objective function employed in this uh, study is the lowest levelized cost of energy. And the current work uh, presents the designed system component sizes in dimensionless parameters, reason being to generalize the sizing caps for all magnitude of daily loads with the same general profile. As opposed to a study conducted by Hove and Tazville 2012, this study opted to use the PV array dimensionless parameter as well as incorporating the battery size dimensionless parameters B cap over LD, as well as the normalized diesel generator variable, which is given by Q DG per L bar. The current slide simply shows the inputs to the model as well as the, the outputs. Using the demand matrix, uh, the load profile for a case study for the place, so Hong Kong, which is found in Tabatsaka district was computed as illustrated here. The comparison of the sizing uh, methods were done, which is the traditional approach as well as the time step approach. And it was found that the traditional approach of sizing the storage battery is five times greater than the storage needed in the, when using the time step approach. And this uh, reflects uh, the five times the cost of uh, the associated with the storage uh, bank capacity. Sizing of the array from the two methods provided approximately the same required number of panels. But when it comes to the PV um, inverter size, the inverter required under the traditional approach was bigger because it assumes that uh, the needed um, inverter should be the inverter that can be able to uh, encompass all the load provided that all appliances can be connected at the same time. Having now identified the best approach, different combination or architectural combinations were studied and because of the objective function of this study being the level as cost of energy, System three, which comprises PV, battery, as well as diesel generator, was uh, selected as the best architect architecture combination, 
with the level as cost of 62, 0, 62 cents US dollars per kilowatt hour. All the comparisons were done at 100% reliability. Having now identified the best uh, architectural combination, optimization of the chosen system was now performed as illustrated in this table here with dimensionless variables of the battery and PV array required to achieve the desired level of reliability with a minimum levelized cost. What happened here, the, the, the battery side, the diesel generator was fixed at 1.22, which is the dimensional, dimensionless parameter. And only the variations were done on the uh, PV array uh, but dimensionless parameter as well as the B cap dimensionless parameters. Uh, until uh, from the reliability ranging from 90 to 100 with the combination resulting to lower, lowest cost plotted in the, as indicated in this table. And now the figure illustrated here was the plot of the level as cost against reliability. And this uh, graph shows that from the optimization performance shown in this figure, an optimal supply reliability was determined to be at 99%. And this was done using an engine, any engineering intuition known as reliability at the, at the knee. This point, the 99% point, is the cost effective point providing much needed benefits from the power system at the least cost. It, it is uneconomical to design the system at 100% reliability since it doubles the cost of energy with just variation of 1% from the 99%. So the current slide outlines that the model is capable of outlining the different components after choosing the, 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 the best system. It can tell you the number of PV panels needed, batteries, and so on. So in conclusion, the comparison of the two approaches used for sizing solar PV systems showed that time step approach is the most cost effective way of sizing the PV systems. And as illustrated in slide 10, simulation results show that solar PV battery plus diesel generator offers the lowest cost of energy of 62 cents USD per kilowatt hour. And that was done at 100% reliability and 83% solar fraction. Optimization results of the chosen system determined the cost effective supply reliability of 99%. So, to generalize the study findings to all parts of the country, it involves scaling up or down the dimensionless parameters P over P0, P over LD, depending on the load that the particular area possesses. So there, it can be recommended now from this uh, study that uh, with the abundance of solar radiation in Lesotho, PV mini grids have a considerable market, in particular in the remote areas. So policy implementation should be effected by the government to meet this market. Also, my institutions of higher learning uh, that offer training in renewable energy technologies should be resourced and encouraged to train local experts on the design, installations, operation and maintenance of the PV mini grid systems. Mm. Thank also, you, Tate um, Your first question, what do the different color coding represent in this Hong Kong load profile? Okay. When looking at the below that, the blue color designates the total load. Now the, the red one, if it's red, that can to everybody, represent the household consumption. And the, the purple one is the for the productive use. And then the green one is for the public use but combined in total is represented by the blue color. I was just trying to show uh, what is in, entailed with, within the total load consumption per a certain hour. So if the blue one is the total, 
So what does it mean on the axis? If, if the blue is the total and the others are the components of this, so the total length of that column is not the-, the Looking the, at, looking at the, the three colors on top of the blue, they are the same size as the, the blue one. It's just trying to dis, uh, disaggregate the blue, whether it's a composite of what section of the- Yeah, the, I hear you. So but, with but number nine, from, number nine to, from number nine to 15, that means the, the total there is not 100, but whatever value that's below 60. From it's number nine? doubling the consumption. Huh? Right, am I? I was saying the way he has portrayed it effectively doubles the consumption. Yeah, So that exactly. means the actual that's... peak load there is 50 kilowatts, not 100. Yeah. Your, 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 your representation doubles whatever whatever you have because you disaggregate over the total. Anyway. I see, I see, yes. Did you look at any different options for battery DOD and therefore battery life and replacement costs in your modeling? It, was, it wasn't considered. Okay, why not? Uh, I think under just that I haven't been able to do the last slide of areas for further research, uh, where I was indicating that. Um, uh, okay. The, okay. Yeah. Okay. The next question: What are the component differences between 99% and 100% reliability that lead to such a dramatic difference in LCOE? E.g., does 99 S use, use less battery storage? The battery store storage basically is five times greater when you are. Sorry. Can you repeat your question also? What are the component differences between 99% and 100% reliability that lead to such a dramatic difference in LCOE? All right. When you design for a 100% reliability, it requires a very big system which will involve a very bigger storage battery. And like I said, the storage battery uh, is the most expensive uh, component of the mini-grid system. But I think the question here is about moving from 99% to 100%. Why is such a huge difference between just 99% and 100%? The system uh, increases dramatically. Because? The components wise, like I said, when you design for 100%, uh, the, st the storage battery becomes very big, which now implicates the costs because the, the storage is the one that is most expensive. Because of the 1% difference. I mean, that's where the question is, but that's okay. Yeah, yeah just 1% difference. Hello? Yes. I'm saying, only from 99, just 1% difference doubles the, the cost of energy from the 99. If it's 30 uh, cents, now you have to buy it at 62 cents by just increasing by 1%. Okay, and that's it. Hello, and the telepolis I see around. Please unshare and the telepolis, sir, please. But people okay, we have just joined do. us. We, we had an issue with, with with Zoom or the presenter then, so we we are all over the schedule now. Is he there? Okay. So the tell person will be our last oh. presenter before. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay, he's here, he can present. Yeah, that's fine. Now I'm scared to admit anybody with funny names. So there's somebody called Kika Zoom. I'm not admitting them. So unless somebody in here tells me that that's a legitimate person. That, uh, yes, please start that uh, police. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Selon Lepolesa. My supervisor is T.O.V. And my topic is optimal sizing, performance prediction, and 
economic appraisal of, of grid solar PV hybrid systems. Uh, we are dealing with the reliability cost approach. Uh, we have our presentation outlined as introduction, methodology, results, conclusion, and recommendations. The main objective was to find appro uh, appropriate reliability level required for a mini system in Lesotho. That minimizes the level as cost of energy. And at the same time, supplied a satisfactory energy service. The research questions for the study were formulated as stated in the slide. What should be the appropriate reliability level required of a minimum system in Lesotho? That minimizes the level less cost of energy. Uh, what should be the level less cost of energy for any architectural combination of grid power systems? What should be the method for the modeling of the hourly load profile where the historical consumption data was never measured? And the method used was to find the reliability at the minimum cost using the help of the graph of the minimum, minimum cost. And then we, pro we, we did a simple spreadsheet based simulation, uh, which was designed to determine the feasibility of the system with, with lower cost of energy and reliability of supply over uh, 8,760 hours in the year. And then sim simulations were done by the way of simulating the hourly power supply flow and then basing it to the hourly load provide. The optimization was based on the estimated AC load of the village. The, the hourly profile, the PV array size, the DG DC generator rated power, and the battery capacity. For this study, we use the cyclic charging uh, as our dispatch strategy. And then the objective function was to minimize the unit cost of energy. Our variables were the PV array size, the DG rated power, the battery capacity, and the strategy employed for uh, dispatching the energy. Our main constraint was that the chosen combination of the, co of the component sizes should be able to deliver enough energy to attain the exact degree of reliability. Uh, the spreadsheet model developed as part of this study used the inputs of the three dimensionless values, which are the PV, the battery, and the generator. The metro meteorological data required was the hourly meteorological data. So we use our TMY database uh, obtained from the link as provided. Uh, the reliability determination was used. Uh, we used the, the sizing curves. Uh, the, the hybrid system design space was defined by generating a family of sizing, system sizing curves that plotted PV array size against battery size for different DG sizes. Uh, the dimensionless variables that correspond with the standard diesel generators capacity values of 15, 20, 25, 30, and 40 kilowatts were used to avoid the danger of oversizing or undersizing uh, as shown by the table. And the reliability between 90% and 100% was considered. Uh, for selection, for selection uh, of the optimum design, design parameters, graphs representing all minimum cost values for different reliability options from previous slide were obtained, as indicated on the graph. Therefore, our argument was that for the configuration of the system with 100% supply reliability level could be twice the size of the system with 99% reliability. As just by increasing the supply reliability by 1%, the cost increased disproportionately. And then the, uh, the leverage cost equation was used as shown uh, on, the, on the slide. Uh, here we have got the, the off-grid system was configured as shown here. As you can see, we have got the load, and then we have got the description of that. We have got the GDS generator. We have got we have got we have got uh, our uh, bet, battery bank, and uh, we have got our generator, our PV, and you can see as like as as we increase the load, the cost increases. 
And then the next slide, we have got uh, the system energy performance, uh, which, which was, uh, the system energy performance was visualized for cloudy and sunny days, uh, as indicated on the, on the slide. Uh, the graphs you see now shows all the possible combinations of the components. Science is variable that satisfies the given load and the general profiles of the identity between 90% and 100%. It should be noted that the graphs for all generator sizes were, were also uh, covered and produced. Uh, here, based on the possible combination explained in the previous slide, marginal return curves that represent all minimum costs were obtained as shown. The marginal curves were plotted on the same graph and the curve which, the curve which appeared at the bottom of the graph was, was chosen. Uh, in conclusion, uh, it was found that the system that were sufficient, sufficiently reliable but with, but with much lower cost than 100% reliable could be developed. It was not worth of going for 100% reliable systems. It was established that the people could live with 1% loss of food very well. The study could replace the cost of PV system by half, which was significant, as more people might be by begin to take the, the technology. Uh, our the, the following recommendations were, were made. The government, together with the civil private society, should recognize the need for the more awareness of PV many grid systems and the optimum design at the least level as cost of any. Further, the study be uh, it was also uh, recommended that further the study should be done to investigate the effects of different dispatch strategies on the cost of energy and the net present cost of the system. The study should further be ex ex extended to uh, analyze the effects of battery technologies on the uh, COE and NPC and the, uh, the consequential indicators. Environment em emissions are significantly affected with dispatch strategies, therefore, should also be investigated. Thank you very much, all. Well, police, uh, I don't see any questions for you, not unless I've missed them. Anybody with a question? Many people are hungry now. If there are no questions, any comments on, on the presentations, on the morning presentations so far? So I'll allow like three comments and then you can go for lunch. Comments, observations, whatever, whatever you have to say. Hello. Yes, I I missed maybe two or three presentations. I think mm, maybe that I could not be able to assess those. Yes, because we had a Zoom problem. Were you in when we had the Zoom problem? Yes, when Ulani was starting to present. Yeah, and, and like a couple of people said, I, I really think it was Bulani's machine that had a problem, not Zoom. We are not necessarily hacked on Zoom, so it probably has some virus or something on his machine. Um, how can that happen? That day, Almas? Yes, good afternoon, everybody. Hope it is afternoon. Now, I have just joined, but this the previous presentation that which they have just given is very interesting. To that be nice, I want to request if I can get some of the presentation in advance. I have a lot of comments on that previous presentation, but uh, because of time and what I can't speech, st stipulate them within the shortest time. First, the only question which I wanted the presenter to explain to me, but I can send my comments later if I get that presentation in soft form, but the question is that, why did he decide to use low LOC, least cost method 
in his analysis. Thank you. I don't know that my question is clear. Atel Polis. Did you hear Almas's question? No, I didn't hear, hear his question well. Can you please uh, repeat the question? Dr. Almas. Hello. Can you please uh, repeat the question? Yeah, the question I have is why did you decide to use is it LCOE, least cost usage of energy approach? Why did you decide to use that approach? Why did you use the levelized cost of electricity approach? Uh, we used the levelized cost of energy because, as I was saying, we were saying that uh, our argument was saying that a hundred percent supply reliability could be twice the size of the system of 99% reliability. So you wanted to, to, to like to explain about or to show that by just increasing 1%, it can uh, increase the cost disappropriately. We are saying by, by just increasing 1%, it can double, double the cost of the system. So by doubling the cost of the system, if maybe we had the project like maybe in a village somewhere, the, the, the doubling of the cost means that the cost could also be used maybe somewhere in the other village because it doubles. It's the same as if you're having 100 uh, uh, households use the electricity. So if you double the cost, it means that you could have as well maybe uh, done another project of the same magnitude somewhere else. So we are just saying that if you want to uh, attain 100% reliability, is the waste of, uh, of, 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 the, of, the, of the money. Thank yeah, you. yeah, okay. You, you can continue the discussion with Almas in the background. Maybe in the chat room, do it privately, yes. or we can connect you with Al. Uh, I'm sure you have his email address. Any other general comment on the yes. questions? Yeah, okay, I, I wanted to, to help with the Almas's question. No, on the data, on the, let's, let's, let's move on from that. You, you will discuss with Almas in the background. Any, any general okay. points um, with regard to the presentations from anybody? I know I said people shouldn't talk, but now nobody wants to talk. Okay. And that, uh, that, uh, that could. Thank you, Tate. Uh, apologies that I did not, uh, I, I did not uh, attend most of the presentations. I was out on some other engagements. But so far, I've listened to about four presentations that we made. And I must say, overall, the quality of the presentations is quite good. They are quite relevant to what is happening out there. So I would like to congratulate the students and the supervisors that uh, I think the presentations are well thought through and uh, well um, investigated, and they are quite relevant. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Kuda. Anybody from outside Africa has to say something. You cannot just be joining and, and be quiet. Yeah. Good afternoon uh, from Europe then. I, I just uh, gave my congratulations uh, in the chat. Uh, it was uh, very good, uh, very interesting presentations, especially on the uh, grid and the um, the, the day ahead, what uh, the, it would be used is, uh, is very interesting to me and also the pump storage uh, is uh, triggering me where I would like to know more about. Congratulations to all for the nice presentations. Thanks Chris. And, and for those who don't know Chris, Chris is about to 
make a couple of mini uh, couple of wind farms in Lesotho with this company here. With that, uh, I think uh, we can go for an early lunch and be back by 10 to 2 so that we start exactly at 2 o'clock. So an hour and 17 minutes from now, according to my watch. So see you just before 2 o'clock. See you. Yeah. All right. Thank you.